This guy is getting stuck over here in the corner. Come on, wire. You're going in there. You don't have a choice, buddy. You're going in, whether you like it or not. Boom! There you go. We went over four studs, up the wall about four feet, and we did not do any drywall damage. That was a tough installation. Really tricky. I hope you guys at home don't have anything this difficult. But if you do, here you go. Hopefully at home you guys, like I said earlier, just have one stud. Maybe two at the most. And you can use a combination of the tricks that we did here to get you through it. All right, nothing left to do here, except for put everything back together again and put the TV on the wall. If you guys remember, we knocked the, there was a box that was holding all these wires in. We knocked that box loose and dropped it inside the wall. So now we need to put a new box on there. This is what's called a cut-in box, okay? So there's little tabs inside the box. There's little tabs. A lot of guys like to pound and knock those tabs out. Don't do that. Those little tabs, all you do is you just break them loose. They're designed so that you can slip a wire through and then the wire can't pull out by accident. So we're going to go ahead and stuff the wires in. And I'm going to do my best. See inside the wire there's a white, black, and a copper. Around that you can't see it, but there's a white jacket, this white jacket right here. I'm going to do my best to try to get the white jacket back inside of the box. Okay, that's, that's the way it's designed to go, to get the fire rating and everything. So that means you got to pull on these wires pretty hard. So then I'm going to go and stuff this guy into the bottom. He's got a flappy end on him. Don't forget the power's off. Don't be a hero. Getting yourself shocked is not pretty. It's not very heroic at all. And you can see I've done hundreds of these things, and even I have to struggle with them. There's no wonderful trick. You just fight it in. So I like to work each wire in a little bit at a time. If you bust the tabs off the back, the wire's going a lot easier, but they also pull out. So that's why they're not supposed to bust those off. So you're gonna be tempted just to knock those things out. Don't do that. Once it's in, you'll find that there's two screws on these boxes. When you turn the screws, when you turn the screws, there's a little flap that drops down and squeezes the drywall in between the front flap and the back flap. And that's how you secure these boxes to the wall. They can be kind of a bugger to put in too. There, son of a gun. That one was hard. Okay. Your screws are all tightened. Your wires are all pulled in right where they should be. Time to strip the Romex. 
Okay, what I do is I just nip the end just like that. Then I start stripping it back, just like that. Take off the paper. There's gonna be paper wrapped around the copper. Take that off, and then go ahead and cut off this rubber and the paper as close to the end of the box as you can. All right, now it's time to ground the wires. So what you do, grab the ground wires, grab your lineman's pliers, this is kind of hard, and you gotta stick them in the box. Can you see inside the box? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab... Move your left hand, I can see. I'm gonna grab all three wires at the same time, all three copper wires at the same time, and I'm gonna start twisting them together. That's what they call a lineman's splice. Lineman's pliers. Lineman's splice, how about that, huh? That one short one's kind of giving me a hard time because it's short. But it looks like I got it. Okay, so I got all three in there. I'm gonna twist it around so it looks like it's semi-tight. Good tight coil on there. Now you're gonna see that I've got one that's really long and I've got one that's kind of medium and I got one that's short. As long as they're all nice and tight together, I only need one long one, okay? We're gonna come back, we're gonna put a ground clip on that in one second. Then I take my wires and split them apart. They didn't leave me a lot of slack on that, did they? Okay, one second, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ground clamp. This is a ground clamp or a crimp, whatever you want to call it. It's just a little copper tube. All we do, slip it over the end of our grounds like that. And then I'm going to slide this all the way back down to make sure that I encompass all of the ground wires. Even that short little dude, he needs to be in there too. Then I'm going to take my crimping tool. I'm going to be careful not to cut the wires. I'm just going to crimp it. And I'm going to go ahead and crimp. Just I'm going to squeeze that ground clamp on there, being extra careful not to cut anything. All right. Now I've got a good ground. All three ground wires are in there, nice and secure. Time to strip these dudes back. Well, what I like to do is make them about the same length. It makes it easier to connect. Go ahead and strip. After you strip it, remember we talked about earlier that we don't want to use the stab ins on the back of the outlets? We're not going to use the stab ins now. We're going to put them onto these. Um, we're going to put them onto these screws. But as you can see, I have three wires and I got two screws. And I'm not going to double them up on top of this. Um, on top of each other. So I'm gonna go grab some wire nuts and uh, make little whips. So I'd love to take the time to remind you guys that this is not a mock-up. This is a real installation. I'm not a paid actor. I'm a professional installer. Not used to filming all the work I do. So every time that I forget something on camera, I say, oh man, I gotta go grab this. In my mind I'm saying, gosh dang it, now I gotta stop what I'm doing, get up and go run out and go grab that supply. Okay, so now we're gonna make a whip I've got three black wires here that are already stripped. I've got one black wire here that's stripped. I put them all together and I make sure all the ends lined up. All the ends are lined up. I put on a wire nut. I like red wire nuts. I use them for everything. Red wire nuts will fit a lot. The color of the wire nut will tell you um, the size and the quantity of wires that you can put inside of it. So like yellow wire nuts are for smaller, brown is kind of for medium. I like red. It's large, but it's also really tight at the top so you can put just a couple wires in there too. So now I've got all the wires all together with my little whip hanging off. I'm going to go ahead and tuck this guy in the box nice and neat. That'll make the installation of the outlet a lot easier. All right, those wire nuts are all the way in the back. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the white. 
Cut them all the same length, make a whip, strip, and strip, and strip. Okay, this might be a good time to talk to you about the color of the Romex too. Not always, but the color of the Romex should tell you what size copper is inside there. And the size of the copper will generally tell you what size circuit um, how many amps that circuit is. So don't get too caught up with the electrical jargon here. All you should really pay attention to is if it's big thick 12 gauge wire, you need to run 12 gauge wire. You can't go from 12 gauge to 14. You can go from 14 to 12 because then you're going to, I know the number's smaller, 14 is bigger than 12, but in the wire world, a 12 gauge cable is bigger than a 14 gauge cable. That's just kind of goes backwards like that. So you can step up. You could put a 12 gauge wire on a 14 gauge circuit, but you can't put a 14 gauge wire on a 12 gauge circuit. Just something to keep in mind. So anyways, got my whip. Next whip. Wire nut, they're all the same length. Wire nut. How you put on a wire nut is you twist and 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 you twist. And when the wires start twisting together and they start coiling together, then you know that you're tight. Okay, so my black ones are tucked in. My white ones tucked in. My grounds are tucked in. Go ahead and cut these to length. So I'm going to go about, uh, about four or five inches out of the box. Strip these. And then I like to bend a little hook on the end. Like that. You guys can see that. Can you see that, Joey? Yep. I bend a little hook on the end. Over here. Bend the hook on the end of all of them. And then, I'm going to put those hooks underneath these terminals. If I hook it from one side, if I hook it from one side, and I tighten the screw, it'll spit the hook out. If I hook it from the other side and put the hook through, it'll suck the hook in. Obviously, we want to suck the hook in. So you'll have to play around with that. Um, the white wire goes on the white screws. The black wire goes on the gold screws. That's the way it always works. Okay? So I'm going to hook it. The hook always kind of goes clockwise on the screw, but that might confuse you when you look at it. So... Just play with it. The ground wire, the copper wire that doesn't have any jacket on it at all, that goes on the green screw. I'm going to tighten the screw down. Do it again. And then one thing I like to do is I like to tighten all the screws that I'm not using so they're not sticking out. Sometimes you can push these wires in there and just the act of pushing the wires in there will create a short circuit, so. Screw down the wires that we're not using. There we go. Now when I go and push this inside the wall, it sounds like, oh, you're easy, just go ahead and hurry and finish. No. When I go and push this inside the wall, I need to make sure that this ground wire is not touching any of the other screws, okay? So I'm gonna push it in, actually kind of fold it in carefully and I'm going to watch that ground wire to make sure that ground wire bends out of the way of all the other screws. There's a skill to all this stuff. If you don't do that, you'll have a short. You're going to pop breakers. Okay, go ahead and tighten this up. As you're tightening it, here's another thing I see a lot. As you're tightening it, the, the outlet will kind of like, kind of go janky, kind of sideways on you. So as you're tightening it and you start to see it walk one direction, just straighten it back out again. Okay. Yes, you can use a drill on this part if you want. Okay, make sure it's straight, level. Put your faceplate on. OK, 
Okay, here's a, my nitpicky thing. When I'm done and I'm putting these screws on, I like the screws to face at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, just straight up and down. Then it makes it look like whoever put it in here cared what they were doing. There you go. Outlet down here is done. The circuit is still off. Let's go ahead and put up the outlet right above the t or behind the TV. To do the outlet behind the TV, this one's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be a slam dunk, really. I'm going to take my cut-in box. Same thing like I used below. This one's gray. The one down below was blue. The same thing. It's got the tabs in the front, the little flipper in the back. Okay. I'm going to stuff my wire through. I'm just going to break these tabs, those little wire tabs loose. Stuff the wire through. Pull it in nice and tight. There we go. I'm going to go ahead. This time, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my drill. Screw the box in. Okay, strip the cable. Bite the end. Pull back the outer white jacket. Okay, we're going to cut off the excess. Cut off the excess paper, the excess rubber. Cut it to length, about four inches out of the box. Strip it. Okay, does this one get hooks? Yep, this one has screws, so this one's gonna get hooks also. Some of these cut-in boxes have a different type of screw on the back. It, it's like a stab in, except it, it stabs in, then you screw it down. Those are okay to use. The ones that just stab and hold with the pressure, those are junk. Don't use those. Okay, once again, the copper one goes on the ground wire. Tighten it down. The white one goes on the white wire. Tighten it down. Tighten down your loose screws that you're not using. The black wire goes on the gold screw. Tighten down the screw I'm not using. All right, then as I fold this in, make sure none of the wires are, make sure that ground wire is not touching any of the other screws. There we go. These screws, who knows, who knows who did what with these screws in some foreign country with some guy who doesn't wash his hands. First thing I do is I grab them and I put them in my mouth. That shows you how smart I am, right? Okay, I'm gonna cheat, use my drill again. Okay, tighten the screws, make sure they're pointing up and down, as always. <sighs> that was it. The hardest part of the installation is finished. We ran this Romex through four studs. Now, um, our partner Joey, who's running the camera now, reminded me, I do a lot of things by habit and I forget to explain it to people. When you're drilling, we call this drilling blindly. Anytime I'm drilling and I can't see what's on the other side of the stud or the other side of the beam or the other side of the drywall, whatever it is, we call that cutting blindly or drilling blindly. Okay, in this case, we drilled blindly. Um, I, I, I'm really good at when I'm drilling and you feel the drill bit about to pop through, you can, you can kind of hear it, you feel it. And so you don't put a ton of 
pressure on that drill so that drill just jumps through because you don't know what you're going to hit on the other side. I kind of have a really good idea what's behind these walls. I've just been doing this a long time. I know there's a bathroom on the other side of this wall, but the plumbing is not going to run through here. The plumbing is going to run through another wall. It's not big enough to run any air conditioning duct, and I know where the electrical is. So I kind of knew that I was safe to run or to start drilling holes blindly. In your guys' case at home, you might not know that. So just be real careful that when you're drilling and that drill is about to go through, you don't just go lunging through on the other side. You never know what you're going to hit. Okay, so all we have to do now is take the TV, throw it up on the wall, sit back, and enjoy. It's time to put this TV on the wall. Save yourself some hassle. Plug it in first, okay? Plug it into the wall. Plug it into the TV. Make sure everything's kind of loose. And then go. This is my lovely assistant, Joey, by the way. All you gotta do is hook the top. Make sure the bottom's on there. Done. Okay, so this part, I'm not gonna bother filming this part because your TVs are all gonna be a little different. But my TV has a locking mechanism. There, there should always be on every TV some way to lock the TV to the wall so that the TV doesn't accidentally fall off if a kid bumps it or if there's an earthquake or something. Sometimes they have like little spring clips or other types of things that lock it on there. This particular TV has screws. You just like turn the screws and it'll tighten the TV to the, um, it'll tighten the TV wall mount to the wall part of the wall mount. And then once it's nice and tight, all you have to do is strap up this wire right here. And get it nice and out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, secure the TV to the wall, and then we'll come back and look at the finishing touches. Now that my screws are in, um, your TVs will be the same way. You can still adjust this TV a minimal amount left and right. I can still slide it left and right just a little bit to kind of dial it in to where the customer wants it. We centered it and it got to be exactly center where we wanted it to be, so I'm not super worried about not being able to reach where we wanted to go. So, I want the TV about an inch or two off the end of that door jam. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to take this cable right here. This is the power cable. There's no secret to this either. You zip tie it and do your best to hide it behind the TV. Some TV mounts come with um, wire running, hiding things. So you can hide your wires. This one didn't come with that. So, so we're just going to make do get it where we can. Now you're wondering, Alan, fantastic installation. You do AV has given me all the confidence to do my installation myself. But you didn't show me what you're going to connect to this TV. Well, in a lot of cases, there's going to be some type of direct TV box or cable box, satellite box, whatever sitting on a shelf directly below the TV. Um, this, this house is set up for some type of um, uh, multi-room uh, video uh, system. Um, so what we have here is a temporary thing. I didn't want to run these wires in the wall because it's temporary. But there is a way to hide these direct, this is a direct TV box. There is a way to hire, hide these direct TV boxes out of the way so that they can't be seen and you don't have to run the wires through the wall. Be looking out for that video. We're going to make that video soon. Um, we're not going to do it tonight. Tonight, we're going to plug this in. We're mostly not going to do it tonight because the homeowner was supposed to provide a radio frequency remote control for this. Didn't provide it. So if I hide this thing, he won't be able to turn his box on and off. So we have to leave it out until he gets his remote control in the mail. Okay, so I went ahead Plugged it in, everything's nice and hidden. Put a little tilt on there so that they can see it. This installation is done. It turned out perfect. It was a tough one. It's a really tough one, but I'm glad we did it. So I hope that you guys have enough information here that you feel confident that no matter where your electrical outlet is on your wall, that you can run it up to your TV and put your TV where you want it to go. 
I'm Alan, and today we did AV. Now, you do AV.